Harvard recognizes caste-based discrimination within institution. So this is very interesting. Um, Harvard University has recently become the first Ivy League university to recognize caste-related bias. The Harvard Graduate Student Union approved changes to a four-year contract adding caste as a protected category. The new provisions of the contract will pave the way for caste-sensitive policies and projects affecting close to 5,000 student workers at Harvard. According to Aprana uh, Gopalan, a graduate student union organizer at Harvard, this change came after Equality Labs presented their study to Harvard's, um, or their research to Harvard's administration. Equality Labs is a Dalit-centered civil rights organization whose goal is to, quote, end the impression of caste, apartheid, Islamophobia, white supremacy, and religious intolerance, end quote. The decision to recognize caste-based discrimination gained an overwhelming 70.6% approval. Ajantha uh, Subramanium, a professor at the Department of Anthropology at Harvard, stated that Harvard's recognition of caste discrimination, quote, can empower oppressed caste students and employees. Okay, I hate to be a buzzkill. They didn't recognize this before? So, like, wait, do, this is like, this is something that is a question that caste based discrimination is a thing? Um, you're misunderstanding. It's not that people deny that this is a reality, so to speak. It's about establishing a policy within their institution to actually create a protected category that recognizes caste. So mm -hmm. in America, protected classes are gender, sex, um, sec uh, okay. sexual expression, you know, race, all that stuff. But if you try to fit caste within its nearest companion race, it actually doesn't fit and it doesn't capture the totality mm -hmm. of what caste is. And so it's about making sure that there are policies on the books within this institution to um, appropriately address caste-based discrimination. Because if you tried to address discrimination mm -hmm. on the basis of caste before, there wasn't really a policy that appropriately fit it. Uh, yeah, but this is policies for where? Um, particularly Harvard's student workers, specifically. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is an issue in in Harvard. Like, I thought they were recognizing it as an international thing. That's the thing. Like, but that's not the case, right? Like, they're just like in Harvard, we recognize that. So they're just coming up with a decision for Harvard as this being a protected class in Harvard. Mm -hmm. So exactly. this. Okay. Okay. So what this could do? Okay. So that yeah, that's a po okay. That's a positive. What this could do is could it could set a precedent for other places to, to do this as well, and maybe mm -hmm. governmental organizations will at some point recognize this as a protected class as well. Yeah. Exactly. And then maybe maybe and then maybe one day entire countries. So I don't understand the word overwhelming here, given that it's only seventy percent. Like I think that's like not that high like what was that what the hell like what was that what was the 30 percent thinking this is not overwhelming Over, overwhelming would be for me is like 90 percent or something like or 100 <laughs> percent okay. Like, okay you're editorializing <laughs> like a little bit but i get it <laughs> <laughs> i still like, get it like these are educated people at harvard and yet 30 percent of them were like no this is not something we want to protect well, maybe they don't think that it's severe enough within their particular institution to warrant a policy. I don't know. Oh, okay. I mean, then you that was a that speculation. Trans... I don't know. Okay, if that's the argument, then that you can make that for trans people. Like, well, we don't have that many trans people, so it doesn't need to be a protected class. Do you know what I mean? Like, you yeah, don't yeah, want to yeah. go down that. You don't want to go down that route. What's yeah, interesting so get... is that apparently yeah. this is something that was campaigned for for eight months. And there was a lot of pushback from the administration and um, student workers even went on strike over this. They sec they threatened a second strike over this. And it wasn't until this US-based nonprofit Equality Labs actually came to the university and presented their research that they had mm -hmm. on the subject of caste-based discrimination in America that they changed their mind and actually mm -hmm. went forward with having this included in part of their contract mm -hmm. negotiations. 
Interesting. Read this comment that I had later. Um, Megan Woman is saying, Armin, casteism is relatively new to Americans and other people in the West. Also, most people who immigrated from India earlier were upper castes. True. How will most of us know all this? Okay, this is Harvard. Okay, this is not new to Americans. This is not just your average American. These are people that are some, are the most educated, some of the most educated people on the planet. They wouldn't be like, oh, I'm just an American. I can't recognize something that hasn't doesn't exist within the borders of the United States. Like these people are aware of the goddamn of things that are happening around the planet. So I don't I don't judge them like, oh, it's new to America. Yeah, this is this is hard work. This is not your average just random American. Um, this and also. I am I, like the benefit of this is not just like, oh, in Harvard, there might be not that many lower castes or dollars there. This is like, to me, the benefit of this is like putting, setting up a precedent. Like the, the, you're, you're basically, this is the benefit of this is beyond Harvard. This is just normalizing. It, it, pro, it provides a framework and a reference and a roadmap for other p institutions to be like, well, I mean, this cannot be the like if, if if you go now suggest this to another like i don't know for-profit institution or a governmental institution or another university they wouldn't think like this is a ridiculous suggestion because harvard has done it so it's like it's such an easier sell in other places so this opens the door to everywhere else right yeah that was um, actually an exact so the the print india um was talking to a lot of different people about this issue and contacted one Indian student studying at um, Harvard and said they are actually studying at a management institution somewhere in America. And they said, this move by Harvard has set a precedent for all higher education institutions in the USA. So I think more recognition of caste in America is going to be very interesting moving forward and having a major institution like Harvard recognizing this is going to be not only um, important for people to bring to in courts when they're trying to have the discrimination they've faced on the basis of their caste recognized, but it's also going to be interesting, like, when I, I messed up what I was saying, no, it, it's not only applies to students in other universities, but also it applies to workers at other institutions, because this is um, going to be seen as legitimizing in many different ways. What I thought was interesting is that this is um, the first Ivy League university to recognize caste-based discrimination as a protected class. But there are other American universities who have um, recognition of caste-based discrimination, such as the University of California, Davis, Colby College, and Brandeis University are three other US universities that do this. Um, I thought what was interesting was um, there i was looking into quality labs we've talked about um like probably a year ago um some of their work before and they make this assertion which is a pretty strong assertion that wherever south asians go caste is carried with them and as there is an increasing um presence and power garnered by south asians in america this is something that needs to be recognized and addressed accordingly um the work of quality labs i find is pretty interesting um like i said it's a it's a dalit centered organization and I, it's founded by this girl um who i think her like online name is dalit diva <laughs> and um a lot of people will probably find a lot or the way that they talk about certain issues to be very woke. Um, but I do think their efforts to um, actually put research behind this issue is very important. Um, so yes, another interesting move yep. in America. Yeah, you know, guys, like we have got some bad experiences from, so you have to be careful not to get, not to get, be allergic to woke language, okay? Because the thing is that protecting minorities, a lot of the fringe woke people, the language that they use has been parallel, like has been borrowing and affecting the entire group of people that are responsible for protecting minorities. So we as people who are anti-woke, when we we have experience with woke people, we have the we see how the languages that we use, and because of the bad experience we have with them. We have this negative gut reaction to anybody who speaks like that. 
but we shouldn't like there are a lot of the movement of protecting minorities is much bigger than the fringe woke community so you might like go listen to these people that are trying to protect minorities and you hear languages that reminds you of your experience with woke people and you're like ew what what like you're one of those people no i mean you shouldn't like this is um this is similar to how we are treated sometimes because people think like um they listen to racists and then they listen to us and they like we say some of the things that we say are anti-islam advocacy they just seem like oh it just like slightly sounds like the people who are anti-muslim bigots and they just dismiss us as being racist or bigots so they just just because it sounds somewhat the same which is not i mean if they were familiar with the topic they would know that we're not the same group of people so you should be careful not to do the same thing with people who are trying to protect minorities and their language sometimes is sim very similar to the fringe wokistani people um doesn't mean that you should dismiss their work they're doing very valuable work okay yeah exactly uh, i'm not gonna um dismiss and just like miss out on what is really valuable about what they're doing just because i you don't like the way that they're talking about it um yeah, yeah i think that this is also a really interesting thing because so i have a friend who um moved to go to university here in my area from india and i have interesting conversations with her because i live in one of the most lefty areas in the country, right? <laughs> and um, it's interesting to get her perspective on how she experiences woke culture, which is extremely prevalent where I live. And she was saying to me, she's like, Susanna, I'm going to paraphrase, like, it's really interesting how people trip over themselves to be so inclusive of me in this almost like awkward kind of painful way, when they fail to realize that particularly for South Asians, the people who are coming here from the United States are the most privileged from our communities. Yet they're tripping over themselves to accommodate me as if I'm a victim or if I'm oppressed. But I am the most well off or among the most well off, you know, from where I was born, where I come from. And I think there's that was a very interesting juxtaposition for me and i think this discussion around caste is going to be very interesting to see how that evolves because this does complicate the way that we have to talk about certain minority groups um or minority groups within north america and um this is going to be something that is somewhat complicated um for people who have a little bit of an not so nuanced wokest view um and how they engage with different groups and the assumptions they make about them um so i just thought that was interesting and i wanted to share that yeah that was very interesting atheist republic needs your help we have been the target of many legal attacks by hindu nationalists ever since our founder armin Avabi blasphemed against hindu deities we have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.